a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write this. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your works, that you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then how you accepted and heard. Keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Lacedosia, write this. The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation, says this. I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything. Yet you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and put white garments to put on so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed and by ointment to smear on your eyes so that you might see. Those whom I love, I reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne, as I myself first won the victory and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. I will seat the victor besides me on my throne. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne, who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne, who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. I will seat my victor beside me on my throne. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O 
The Lord be with me. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now, a man named Zacchaeus, who was the chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short of, in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. And when they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, he is gone to stay at the home of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay him fourfold over. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save what is lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, church. Well, I won't have a show of hands to find out who took me up on my journey through Revelation yesterday. So I would continue to make our trip through the book of Revelation uh, here during these days leading up to Advent. And as I said yesterday, I invite you to uh, this reading through Revelation and to focus on the clear things that are being presented on how we should be living and what God would be asking for us, because those things are very clear all throughout the book of Revelation. Again, there's many prophetic images, and you don't even need to worry about trying to interpret all those things. What do they mean? But let's focus on what is God calling you and I to do based on what he's saying to these, uh, well, through John, uh, throughout this book. So today, we get more of the churches. We started yesterday, and today we're in chapter 3. And I think out of, out of, uh, out of all the chapters growing up, that I was very acquainted with in Revelation. It was chapter three because of the whole lukewarm discussion. We quoted that a lot for some reason. Even in my garage band that I had as a kid, we wrote a song about this section in Revelation. Uh, I won't sing it for you now. Um, but a few things I wanna pull out. We, do, we get two of the three churches in chapter three today in our readings. Number one, at the end, the invitation of Jesus, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him. Uh, I want to start there. The, the Lord is always inviting, always inviting, because when he's dealing with these churches here, he's calling them into account and giving them some correction. Except we skipped Philadelphia today because they were the ones that didn't need any <laughs> didn't need much correction. We're only focusing on the ones apparently that did. But Jesus is always inviting. I stand at the door and knock. He's always inviting. In the moment we respond to him, he's there to meet us. And in our battle of, of the Christian moral life, the spiritual life, our battle of purity, um, all of these things, the Lord knows we struggle. The challenge and the problem isn't specifically that we might be struggling to work things out. The problem is whenever we come to the place of saying, well, this just doesn't matter, and I'm just gonna leave it alone. The Lord is very aware that we are going to struggle. The challenge is, is when we just give up the struggle and say, well, whatever, either God doesn't care or it doesn't matter. And so in this, Jesus is saying, I stand at the door and knock. I'm always there, ready and willing. Second thing, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. 
you and I are being invited in Revelation to listen to the Holy Spirit, to not just sweep it under the rug, but to pay attention and listen to what He's calling you and I and the church at large to. So two more things. The first church in Sardis in our reading today says, you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. And then he says, strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains. It's on the point of death. And it's a sobering invitation. And boy, I look at different seasons of my life. I look at my life now and say, Lord, is this me? Am I, am I living on what I've done in the past? And what do I need to resurrect and live on today? What do you need to do in me now this day? Strengthen what remains. You might even find, and others who are listening online, that, that you are maybe frustrated and dejected with that which you used to do, which you feel like maybe is now dead. But the Lord would say, don't let that keep you back. Don't let that hold you back. Strengthen what remains. Take what is there, water it, till the soil, let it grow. The last thing from the church of Laodicea. Your works are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. The Lord does n- has never wanted us to be those that sit on the fence, weigh the options, go wherever things seem to be most convenient. He wants you all in or all out, but not this kind of, uh, just keep options open. Uh, On my way into the Catholic Church, it was one of the things, I enjoyed talking with the people that were stridently anti-Catholic and said, how could you do this? Because they believed something. And we could have a conversation because they had convictions. And when somebody has convictions, even if it's opposite, we can have a conversation because they believe something. The people I struggled with were those that would be like, well, whatever. As long as it's got Jesus in it, it doesn't matter. Catholic, Protestant, Mormons, they're probably okay. Listen, it's that kind of who cares, lukewarm, that's not what the Lord is looking for. He wants us to be people of decision and to make a choice. It's always in the context of invitation. I stand at the door and knock. The Lord is ready to meet us at that place of of conversion, of that response. As we reflect more on Elizabeth of Hungary, maybe throughout the day, you might read a little bit on her. She was one that got off the fence and made a difference, serving the poor. And may she pray for us, intercede for us, that we will be a church that doesn't just say words and go to formation classes, but those that uh, will actively live this gospel in our own lives personally and in those we engage throughout the day. Amen.